everybody. I'm Bill Fleming, welcoming you to the Packer Football Spirit of 76, brought to you by Frigidaire, the home environment division of General Motors. Frigidaire is very happy and proud to be bringing you Packard football once again this year, and they're also happy for bringing you 58 years of quality products for your home. During this next 30 minutes, you're going to be seeing the stars of 75 in action, and we'll be taking a look ahead to those players who in 1976 will be making the headlines in the Pac-8 conference. So stay with us now, won't you, for the Pac-8 football spirit of 76. And we'll be underway right after this word from Frigidaire. In the old days, when Mom bought a Frigidaire refrigerator, it was really an occasion. Today, you can buy our convenient three-door refrigerator in the latest Frigidaire color, Poppy. And you never have to bother with the messy chore of defrosting because it's completely frost-proof. See it at your Frigidaire dealer and see how far we've come since the good old days. Of all the reasons to buy a washing machine, the same old reason is still the best one. How long will it last? How long will it work for you without breaking down? Frigidaire has been building washers and dryers for many years. And each year, we keep adding the latest features. But people keep buying our washers and dryers for the same old reason. Because they're from Frigidaire. And because they last. This is how the 1975 Pacific 8 football season ended and how the 1976 season began at the Rose Bowl as UCLA upset number one ranked Ohio State, knocking the Buckeyes out of the national championship. There were numerous Pac-8 stars in 75, and now we salute those who were the seniors, beginning with John Shara, the versatile UCLA quarterback. Shara kept the Bruins' bear attack smooth and balanced. He finished his four-year college career with more than 4,000 yards rushing and passing. At the end of the 1975 season, he was named the consensus All-America quarterback and was also honored by both the NCAA and the National Football Foundation and Hall of Fame for his outstanding combination of academic and athletic achievement. Cliff Frazier, the mammoth nose guard, keyed UCLA's defense, which improved so rapidly during the season. A theater arts major who played the piano, Fraser also played a mean tune on opposing ball carriers. His quickness and agility made him a big play threat on defense every time. One of the nation's finest defensive backs roamed the Oregon football field. His name was Mario Clark, the Duck senior cornerback who clung to receivers like he was their Siamese twin. And he could run with the ball after he caught it, too. Another fine defensive back was Stanford's Gerald Wilson, one of the card's most consistent performers. He twice was named Pacific 8 Player of the Week, performing brilliantly against Michigan and Washington. Washington State's big play guy was defensive end Mark Husplone, number 90. His three fumble recoveries enabled the Cougars to upset Kansas early in the season. A dangerous threat on defense was Danny Reese, Southern California cornerback. Reese was a deadly tackler and stole 18 passes during his career. He became the nation's second leading punt returner in 75 with runbacks like this one against Purdue. State's linebacker Bob Horn, number 43, was a savage tackler who kept opposing runners in fear of the Beavers' defensive middle. Al Burleson made big plays all year, and it was his safety blitzes which triggered Washington's upset of Southern California. He also contributed a 93-yard interception return against Washington State. Perhaps 
perhaps the most versatile player in the nation was Chuck Muncie of California, a consensus All-American running back and the runner-up in the Heisman Trophy voting. He could do just about everything. Catch passes, run with power, run with grace. He combined power with speed, strength with balance. Muncie had it all. He averaged 132 yards rushing and also ranked fourth in the conference in pass receptions. At six foot three, 228 pounds, he was bigger than 90% of opposing linebackers. And with his 4-5 speed, he was often the fastest player on the field. He threw three passes all year, and two were for touchdowns. The opposite of Muncie at California was wide receiver Steve Rivera. At six feet even and 180 pounds, his size didn't terrorize opponents. He had no blazing speed, but he had hands and heart. He concluded his career as the Pac-8's third-ranked pass receiver of all time. It's the Steve Rivera's of college football that the Pac-8 salutes. Those seniors who worked so hard and so long to achieve victory. There were some departing coaches who deserved Pac-8 salutes, too. D. Andrus, the great pumpkin of Oregon State, left the coaching field after 11 years to become the Beavers' athletic director. At Washington State, Jim Sweeney resigned after eight years with the Cougars. The Cinderella story of 1975 was Dick Vermeil of UCLA, who in his second season with the Bruins won a share of the Pac-8 title and a Rose Bowl victory over Ohio State. Vermeil left to become the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. And John McKay became head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers after winning four national championships at USC. One of McKay's assistants, Craig Fertig, became the head coach at Oregon State. And a former assistant, John Robinson, replaced him at USC. A legend has left an indelible mark on the Pac-8. And now a look at the returning stars of the Pac-8 conference. At California, Coach Mike White is blessed with numerous returning standouts, including Joe Roth, the back eight's leading passer in 1975. He came out of the junior college ranks to replace departed Steve Bartkowski. All Roth did was lead the Bears to a share of their first conference title since 1958 and to the national total offense crowd. His ability to set up quickly and throw all kinds of passes perplexed Bear opponents to no end. Number 99 was worn by speed demon Wesley Walker. He was California's deep threat. Walker caught nine touchdown passes and led the country in yards per catch. In fact, every time he grabbed a pass, he averaged an amazing 23.3 yards. His blazing speed was of such caliber that he anchored the Bears sprint relay team to second place in the NCAA track meet last spring. California's top returning defender is number 88, linebacker Phil Heck. Beset by injuries his first two years at Cal, Heck really came into his own in 1975. He led a Bear defense, which ranked second in the Pac-8 in scoring yield. The new Washington State coach, Jackie Sherrill, is pleased to start his Cougar coaching career with Dan Dornick on his side. Despite missing three games with injuries, Dornick ranked fourth among the Pac-8 runners. Another outstanding Washington State player is Gavin Hedrick, who ranked fourth in the nation with his 45-yard punting average. At Oregon, coach Don Reed will have quarterback Jack Henderson for two more years. Henderson completed more passes in 1975 than any other returning passer in the nation. He threw for almost 1,500 yards.
also returning is Greg Bauer, Anderson's favorite target in 1975. Bauer caught 52 passes last year to rank among the nation's top 10 receivers. He's only 5'9", but he certainly makes up his lack of size by being able to catch the ball of the crowd. George Bennett, a junior last year, was Oregon's workhorse. Bennett bowled for 805 yards rushing, accounting for two-thirds of the Ducks' entire team rushing totals. At Southern California, Gary Jeter returns as a formidable part of the Trojans' defensive line. Incredibly quick, Jeter harassed runners in their own backfield and knocked down an astounding eight passes at the line of scrimmage during the season. Randy Simlin was USC's only sophomore starter last year, and he became the Trojans' leading pass receiver. He grabbed 23 passes during the season, including this beauty against Oregon. The big man for Southern California once again in 76 will be Ricky Bell. Before leaving for Tampa, Trojan coach John McKay had this to say about him. I think that Ricky will go down as he completes his career, which will be next year, as one of the great backs in SC's history because he has tremendous physical strength. As the game goes on, he endures longer and longer. He gets stronger and stronger. And there's very few people uh, that are as fast as him that size. I, I, I would really compare him more if I could compare him to one of the greatest running backs of all time also, besides Simpson, is Jimmy Brown. Ricky Bell was simply phenomenal in 1975. He led the nation in rushing and missed by six scant yards of breaking the single-season NCAA record by Ed Marinero of Cornell. He would have broken that record easily had not four runs totaling 195 yards been nullified by penalty. In all, he gained 1,875 yards rushing, nearly 300 more than anybody else in the country. Despite carrying the ball 32 times per game, he averaged better than five yards per carry, and he never lost his cool. For the last 10 years, there have been a, a lot of great runners here at USC, guys like John Arnett, Mike Garrett, O.J., and Anthony Davis. And I knew there would be some pretty big shoes to fill uh, playing behind guys like those. But the thing I wanted to do was to play the best Ricky Bell could play. And I think of those guys. People put pressure on me talking about uh, guys like that. But I just tried to stay to myself and uh, tell Ricky Bell to play the best he could possibly play. Ricky Bell was a marked target all year, drawing heavy enemy concentration. But he kept rambling, gaining an amazing 52% of USC's total offense with his running. And then in the Liberty Bowl, Bell took this screen pass against Texas A&M and roared 73 yards for a touchdown, leading the Trojans to a 20 to nothing victory in John McKay's final collegiate game. Coach Jack Christensen is blessed with one of the nation's leading receivers in Tony Hill. Hill caught 55 passes during the 75 season, gained more yards through pass receptions than any other Pac-8 player, and turned seven of those grabs into touchdowns. He appears destined to break all of Stanford's career passing receiving records at a school where the pass is a way of life. Hill was a super athlete in high school. He averaged 31 points in basketball, and once he struck out 18 batters in a seven-inning baseball game. Guy Benjamin was one of two fine quarterbacks at Stanford. Benjamin had the Pac-8's highest completion percentage and threw for more than 1,000 yards in eight games. Mike Cordova started most of the season for the Cards and threw also for more than 1,000 yards, 1,300 to be exact. Cordova had a rifle arm, 
but he could also drop in that soft pass, too. Stanford's defensive stalwart was Duncan McCall, number 77, a defensive tackle. He's the son of former Stanford All-American Dr. Bill McCall. Duncan made a name for himself as a first-team all-conference lineman. At Oregon State, Dennis Boyd, number 85, returns as a four-year starter for the Beavers. Defensive back, Johnny Ray Jones, chosen the Beavers' outstanding rookie last season, also is back after intercepting passes in four different games in 1975. One of the reasons Washington coach Don James was Pac-8 coach of the year in 75 was Robin Earl, a pulverizing 250-pound fullback. Earl bulldozed for nearly 800 yards as the Huskies came within one field goal of the Rose Bowl. Earl's shadow may weigh as much as Scott Phillips, the Huskies' 160-pound wide receiver, who caught 33 passes in 1975. The transition from offense to defense didn't bother number 66, Charles Jackson, who averaged 12 tackles a game from his nose guard position. Wendell Tyler of UCLA was one of college football's most underrated runners in 1975 because he competed in the same conference with Ricky Bell and Chuck Muncie. But he gained 110 yards per game, and he had a better rushing average than either Bell or Muncie. He broke UCLA's season rushing record despite not starting the first two games of the season. He ran for more than 100 yards in eight different games during his junior year. Complimenting Tyler was Wally Henry, a junior flanker who saved his best performance of the season until the Rose Bowl. What a game he played there. And you'll be seeing it a little bit later on. And here's Dr. Death, Oscar Edwards. Edwards was one of the pac -8's very best strong safeties, a sure tackler and a fine pass defender. Then there's Manu Tui Sosopo. Number 40, who started in the Rose Bowl game as a freshman. Well, that's a look at the returning stars. Now get set for the color and excitement of the Pac-8 football spirit of 76. There's nothing quite like the spectacle of college football. For the next few moments, let's enjoy what we call the Pac-8 football spirit of 76. But it's the big plays that bring the fans back for more Pac-8 football action. Fans who love to see the hard hitting of college football. And the unusual play. And there was no 
bigger play than this amazing 78-yard touchdown pass in the final moments, which enabled Washington to gain a come-from-behind victory over Washington State. Can you believe it? When UCLA outlasted USC to win the Pac 8's berth in the Rose Bowl, the Bruin cheerleaders were ecstatic. Seventy-six Rose Bowl. Number one, Ohio State against a UCLA team that the Buckeyes had beaten by three touchdowns during the regular season. But the Bruin defense had improved immeasurably since October and indicated early that this was not to be a repeat. Ohio State's big and brutal defense proved impregnable in the first half, holding UCLA to just nine yards rushing. Traded field goals in the first half, with Ohio State scoring first for this 42-yarder off the foot of Tom Clayman. UCLA's lack of offense worried Coach Dick Vermeil. But not for long. In the third quarter, John Shara found flanker Wally Henry open. And Henry darted 16 yards to the game's first touchdown. UCLA missed the conversion but held a 9-3 lead after entering the game as a 15-point underdog. Twelve minutes later, Shara again spotted Henry free, fired a pass which Henry took the remaining 67 yards. That made it 16-3 for UCLA, and the Bruins were going wild. Johnson rammed over from the three for a touchdown. That made it 16 to 10 with enough time remaining for anything to happen. Ohio State got the ball back for the first down of the Bruin 35. Cornelius Green threw, but UCLA's Barney Person picked it off and returned it 30 yards. Three and a half minutes to play. Wendell Tyler broke the Buckeyes back with this beautiful 54-yard run, giving him 172 yards rushing for the day. This wrapped it up for the Bruins. An unbelievable upset of the number one ranked team in the Rose Bowl for the second time in 10 years. seconds ticked away. Buckeye coach Woody Hayes crossed the field to congratulate Dick Vermeil. So that's how 1976 joyously started in the Pac-8. Now this from Frigidaire, the home environment division of General Motors. From the General Motors proving grounds comes Chevrolet, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Buick and Cadillac. The same engineering and design skills behind all these fine General Motors cars are in all these Frigidaire appliances. Refrigerators, Frigidaire washers, dryers, room air conditioners, dishwashers, and the newest member of the Frigidaire General Motors family, one of the easiest ways to cook since cooking began, the first touch and cook range in history with solid state controls. General Motors' reputation for dependability is behind all of these Frigidaire appliances. When you put your hard-earned money into Frigidaire appliances, you always enjoy the feeling of knowing you did the right thing. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this Pac-A football spirit of 76, brought to you by Frigidaire, the home environment division of General Motors. Frigidaire is very happy and proud to once again be associated with Pac-8 football, and they're also very happy uh, being in their 59th year bringing you quality products for your home.
This is Bill Fleming extending to you a sporting invitation to become part of the Pac-8 football scene in 1976, our country's bicentennial year.